Hello, I'm Larry Berkelhammer, and with me is Dr. Eric Pepper, a world-renowned authority in psychophysiological self-regulation. Welcome. Well, thank you for inv inviting me to be with you. I would like to have you tell us a little about the power of respiration, the power of breathing. We all breathe, we're breathing all the time. If we're not breathing, we're dead. But there are ways to breathe to improve health. So what can you tell us about that? Well, you know, if you listen to the language, a sigh of relief, I'm inspired, you know, a breath of fresh air, these all represent patterns of breathing. And the way breath or respiration is the boundary between the unconscious to the conscious. You know, you can voluntarily control it by holding your breath to slow it down. And yet when you're not conscious, such as during sleep, you're still breathing. How we breathe is intimately connected to our health, emotional status, etc. And health really in breathing is that we can have a broad range. We can breathe very quickly. <laughs> we can breathe very slowly. And we can use those to bring about the state of mind we want. So if, if I'm falling asleep and I want to be awake to pay attention to something, but I keep nodding off, if I breathe more rapidly... You'll wake up. Yeah. And on the other hand, when I get scared, mm -hmm. I almost take a gasp, <gasps> get fearful, and now my whole body is activated for this fight-flight response. Mm -hmm. I can also interrupt that by breathing easily. Mm -hmm. So I think for, for health, one of the practices I often do with people is the first one is just to observe when and where you hold your breath. That's number one. Because in most cases, it isn't necessary. This is just like the, the alarm reaction. Right. And for example, let me do a little exercise with you. What I want you to do in a moment is to look to the extreme right and to the extreme left each time I snap my finger. So it would be like this. When I snap, I look to the right, then to the left. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Get set, go. Are you holding your breath? <laughs> Yes. And what you just did is like you oh, saw that's it. that's funny. You're a vigilant, and that's how people work at the computer. That's if we get scared. Yeah. We hold. And at this moment, your body gets activated to, for a fight-flight response in a way. When in fact, hopefully, this was not life-threatening. We do this sitting at the computer. We hold our breath or we shallow breathe. There's nothing wrong doing this for a moment. However, if we do this habitually, then it may compromise our health. Mm -hmm. And so instead, when you observe this, you can ask, is there danger there? If there's not danger there, then all I do is I just say, okay, I held my breath, that's good. And let myself breathe a bit slower, without effort. And that means I can let my, my abdomen get bigger, as if my lungs are like a big balloon in my stomach area. So when I inhale, this balloon gets bigger. The lower ribs widen, my stomach goes out a bit, my, my back slightly arches, my pelvic floor goes down, and then oh, the air flows out again. I do this very peacefully. And so if I want to really regenerate, then I would almost move to breathing about six, seven breaths a minute for a moment. I inhale real smoothly without trying. I exhale, let the air almost float out and stop. And then the air goes in. And if I do this without effort, and I can almost imagine, like a body scan, as I exhale, I can think of the air going right down my arms, if they're hollow tubes. Mm -hmm. I know it's more an awareness. Or down my legs. <sighs> then in fact, I get quieter and peaceful. I'm regenerating myself. I get sympathetic, parasympathetic balance. Sympathetic is the uh, flight, fight, flight response. Whereas parasympathetic is the rest and digest right. uh, response. And we, we all seem to be a little too sympathetically activated and would like to, I mean, humans are made to live more in parasympathy, li made to live, we evolved to be more relaxed, more calm. I think that what we really are, we want to be both. We want to have the ability to react. Right. And during that moment of reaction, there's no need for us to regenerate mm -hmm. because now we are trying to protect ourselves or getting something. And only when we can now restore, you could say that's a kind of more parasympathetic state, yeah. then we can regenerate. The key is 
to be able to alternate. Being in a parasympathetic state for a long time is as pathological as being in a sympathetic state. Sure. It is this continual balance back and forth. Let, let me suggest one other exercise mm -hmm. to show the power of how breath affects us. What I'd like you to do is just inhale, exhale like you're doing, but however, each time you exhale, exhale only about 70% of the previous inhaled air. So you inhale, you exhale 70%, inhale, exhale 70%. Okay, I'll time you. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Get set, go. So each time you just exhale 70% of the previous inhaled air, that's all. I'm feeling kind of, it's making me kind of tense. Good enough, let's stop, okay. And what happened to your thinking? Do you get more fuzzy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was trying to focus on the breathing, but I wasn't feeling comfortable. You started to feel uncomfortable, right? I, unco I was definitely feeling uncomfortable. Almost anxious? Yeah, more towards that, yeah. Yes, some people get lightheaded, fuzzy. Yeah, if, it, if, if I continued to breathe like that, you took it for 30 seconds. That's all. And notice in 30 seconds of simply changing your breathing pattern, you had major physical mm -hmm. and emotional mental right. changes. Right. What is so interesting is that many people do this, and you didn't, all that? All, many times without <clears throat> knowing. And when we work with patients, many people who are asthmatic, many people who have panic attacks, many, many disorders which are that if they learn to reshift their breathing pattern, not in this way to increase the symptomology, then they learn to get quieter and they can bring balance to themselves and their symptomologies decrease, they gain more control. Yes. And I am so impressed time and time again that just a simple change in breathing patterns can both induce symptoms and problems or reduce them. And that again gives us control. So it means I need to recognize where I gasp or where I just do this almost fearful breathing. Then interrupt, say, okay, I have a choice. Let me breathe lower. And then I learn also to react differently to my world because really my boss is, if I react to my boss that way, he or she is not a saber tooth tiger. They're just a person. If we're actually changing the blood gas balance and the acid base balance, we're changing our brain chemistry by breathing differently. Correct. It's ironic though that at the times when we feel most anxious during the day, those are the times we need to be breathing more diaphragmatically, slower, and those are the very times we tend to breathe shallowly. Well, it's also, it makes sense because what happens is that when we become fearful, we see a symbol of fear, our amygdala is activated, which is about 18 milliseconds quicker, I think, mm -hmm. than our cortex. So we react and then our cortex basically disappears. Right. So now you need to, the key then is to become aware earlier. Oops, I'm reacting and, and it takes lots of rehearsal. It's not any different than driving a car. The first time you drive a car, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. With lots of practice, you can. Mastering is equal. This is mastery learning. So, so how would you practice this? Let's say, let's say you're, you're, you, first of all, the problem I see is how do we become aware of how we're breathing? Not, I mean, obviously we can hook up to biofeedback equipment, um, but without that, how can people become more aware of how they're breathing? Well, let me do it two ways. One, stand up for a sec. Did you hold your breath? I did. Sit down. <laughs> I should be able to stand up without holding my breath. Yes, I would agree, totally. Notice you did not know. So now next time you stand up, you can say, let me observe. Uh -huh. Next time at home, make a list. When you put your key in the lock, do you hold your breath? When you pick up your cell phone, do you hold your breath? Yeah. So you start keeping a chart and it's even easier to observe others. So observe your wife, your office partner, whatever. Observe when they hold their breath, then we can observe ourselves. Ask them to observe us. How do we remember to better remember to even watch out, to, to observe ourselves? Because most of us go through the day totally so involved in our activities, rushing from one place to the next, how, how can we develop that awareness to even observe our breath? 
Well, I assume most of us forget because we get captured by our tasks. Yeah, exactly. And so what you just need to do is, is have a reminder. Use your cell phone, set a timer on your cell phone every 20 minutes to just go off as a trigger. Are you breathing or not? Put a note up somewhere. Tell your partners to do this. It's much easier that way. Then role rehearse certain situations. Keep a chart, that's the easiest. Make a chart, write down how many times you observed yourself this today. When, where, and how. Do it every day and that itself is often highly motivating. So we can see it. And you're gonna blow it sometimes. And then you notice the whole day at your office, you never observed it. So when you're at the office, and you totally forget, instead of blaming yourself, you know, I'm no good, I'm stupid. Just say, it happened, but how can I do it better tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So imagine using the information from yesterday to make the plan for tomorrow to improve it. And so be proactive and start planning and have your reminder sheet there. It does works it, easier. Does it ever get to the point where you've internalized it, where you no longer need the external cues like an alarm or... Well, let's take the example standing up, okay? So stand up again. <clears throat> See, now I'm gonna breathe when I stand up. That's okay, you take a breath and, and exhale. So you breathe at the same time? Now, yes, I, I, this time I took a breath before I stood up and I was exhaling as I was standing. And that is cool learning. So if you do this about 10,000 times, you'll be automatic. It becomes automatized, yeah. Yes. Right. And the key of breath holding is critical also for people with pain. Because if I have pain in my hip or back and I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna brace and hold my breath. Right. If the only thing people can do is to exhale during the movements, their pain will probably be reduced by 50%. So if I go, I would have less pain. Mm -hmm. And I just want to point out, you were making that sound so that people can know correct. you were exhaling. You're not saying we should be breathing loudly like that all the time. Well, it depends on during which conditions. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. Uh, however, for yourself, it may be a useful rem remembrance to do this. And for example, when I go skiing, in fact, I do that. With every pole plant, I make a noise. Shh, shh. And it reminds me to keep breathing and for me to stay flexible. Mm. Because if I hold my breath, <gasps> I stiffen. And I'm a potential of getting injured. Of course, yeah. And so it is critical. So I would say it is not so bad to make a noise to, rem remember, to remind yourself to exhale. And then you condition it to tasks. That's all. Yeah. And keep a chart and get your partner, your office workers to help you. And then, you know, schedule on your cell phone an appointment with yourself. And actually, we should point out there are now a number of things, products people can buy, get them from Amazon or anywhere. Um, free, not the freeze framer, but the uh, M, M Wave. Yes, the stress, stress eraser, M Wave yeah. are all strategies, but which are devices to teach you to breathe at about six breaths a minute or so. There are other cell phone apps which will guide you through breathing. Mm. That is still different than catching yourself and observing uh, yourself. Right. Yes. However, it is doable. I'm so impressed with my students at San Francisco State. Remarkable. We teach a class, Holistic Health 380, where we take a, they go through a program for the whole semester, which includes stress management and a self-healing project. When the students do this self-awareness and behavior change, they have an 80% improvement in their symptoms. And it ranges from having pulled your hair 860 minutes an hour a day, dropping it to 10 minutes, mm -hmm. to having hip pain and the pain disappears. And there's just, no reason to believe this would just be with these young students. It, this would be the case with anyone of any age group. Yes, when we start taking charge, there's more hope. When we start taking charge, there's more hope. The key That's is... A great note to end on. Yeah, but the real key is, it's skills, not pills. Skills, not pills. That sounds like the title of a new book. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>